Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center and Mark's Backyard Birds on YouTube. We are talking about Orioles today. They are just starting to arrive here in the Kansas City region, getting some spotty reports around, nothing heavy yet. So they, there's still a lot more to come, but we're on the early end of that. And someone mentioned to me, he said, Mark, you haven't talked about Oriole feeders in a while. Would you please address that? And I said, sure, let's talk about that. So people that, you know, if you're a first time person trying to attract Oriole or you're an experienced person, hopefully this will they'll benefit you. But Orioles are attracted to three things food wise. The thing kind of the whole Oriole feeding thing kind of started because these bright orange and black birds, the Baltimore Oriole that were is most famous across the eastern two thirds of the US, were landing on hummingbird feeders and they were drinking the sugar water, sticking their bill and licking and lapping in uh, like uh, like they were a big fat hummingbird uh, and people were like oh my gosh what is this and and so it kind of started evolving from there and people started trying to attract them to their uh, their feeders and to do that you know hummingbird feeders are kind of small for them so the natural thing is to make them a little bit bigger and so if uh, you know the sugar water uh, the feeders came out first and they were uh, they, the study showed that they preferred a mixture of six parts water to one part sugar instead of four to one like a hummingbird feeder so they and they have bigger perches for them to land on so they can reach the, the nectar better and bigger ports for them to stick their bill in and drink the sugar water well another thing that's happening at that same time is uh, birds migrating through uh, the lower rio grande valley and through arizona and places like that coming back from the tropics were eating on people's fruit trees. They were eating oranges that had fallen to the ground and grapefruits that had fallen to the ground and lemons. And so people would uh, cut them in half and stop them on tree limbs and the Orioles would just love the pulp and they weed on that. And so, okay, well, let's make feeder for them that they can eat some of the the fruit on live. <laughs> All right, so things like this where you can start cut oranges in half and, and put a group of a grouping of orange halves on there and just hang that up so they can eat the pulp. And, then, and you can do this in lots of different ways. I, I always tell the friends that had, uh, they tack finishing nails across their deck regularly and cut orange quarters and put them on the finishing nails so the Orioles just land right on the deck railing and eat the orange pulp from there. But you can also, like I said, you can do grapefruit, you can do lemon, citrus is the, the key there, the pulp. And so that's two methods. And a lot of these feeders that are, and if we can see this one, this is a combination feeder and they've got stobs available for you to um, put your citrus on there. And then the last thing that the Orioles are famously attracted to, and I don't know who started this trial process. I've never have been able to find the history of this, but they started, they, they love grape jelly. And feeders kind of evolved into, okay, now the sugar water and uh, the, the orange halves and the lemon halves are, and then grape jelly. And so a lot of feeders today, you know, I, I jokingly say that uh, grape jelly is the crack cocaine of the Oriole world because they really do love that grape jelly early in the season. Whenever they're first returning, uh, plants are not blooming it very well, so there's not a lot of nectar for them. There's not as many insects early in the season, and the jelly is really important to them. It doesn't seem to be nearly as important later in the season, and it's good to switch them to dried mealworms or live mealworms during the nesting season to help them out. But the grape jelly is definitely a, a big hit with Orioles. No jelly with high fructose corn syrup. Trying to get all that out of my mouth at one time. But natural jelly sugars are the best. And uh, the, so when you're, you're picking out jellies, please keep that in mind. And presenting them, lots of ways to do that. We got There's lots of just dishes to put the jelly in. These work great because you can actually put mealworms on one side and jelly on the other. You can put an orange half in one and jelly on the other. Things like that. A lot of different ways to do it. Um, and the, you know, things like this. And orange color is it something that we get asked about a lot. Yes, it can help. We've seen that, that and, and some people do put out additional orange color in the early in the season to get them attracted to them. We used to recommend hanging like orange ribbon or an orange bow or an orange uh, a streamer underneath your feeder so it blows in the wind to try to catch their eye. Probably not super important, but it might help a little bit. And of course, you've got orange domes and things to help attract them to them. And that way it protects your feeders from the, the storms washing out or diluting the jelly too much. So. Oriole feeders, lots to choose from. 
Yeah, put them out this time of year, you might get rewarded. And it, it, that applies all across the country, several different species that will visit these feeders. So great idea for a program. Thanks for that. Give us a like. Give us a share. Please send an idea for future ones. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.